Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk all about custom formatting in Power BI. Okay, custom formatting. In this video, just gonna lay the foundation, right? I'm just gonna show you how to quickly get started through like three different scenarios, right? Three different demonstrations, okay? So instead of all this talking, you guys know how I like to do, let's head over to my laptop. Okay, in this PBIX file, I have three different tables and I've imported data. Custom formatting will work on columns and measures, just depending on the data type, okay? Go read the official documentation that kind of goes through all the different, you know, scenarios and techniques and things you can do. Use custom formatting, you go over to the model view and you expand both properties and fields, expand both of those panes, and then expand the table that contains the column you wanna format. So I'm working with these three different tables. I'm gonna start with date. This is demo number one. So we click format date, and I like to format the data, right? And so what you do is, you see where it says date time format, you click the you click the drop down, and you'll see two sections, one for custom format and one for common date formats. Under custom format, click custom. And so this will be very similar for, you know, you'll see this throughout the demos. This type of pattern will be very similar. And then they give you a, a sample of what it's gonna look like, right? They give you a, a sample custom format expression, okay? And so I'm gonna type my own. So let's say we just want day, right? So if I put that there, it's the 14th day. But what if I want the day name, right? If I put in three Ds, it gives me an abbreviation. If I put in a fourth D, it gives me the full name. What if I put in capital D? Let's put in capital Ds instead. So I put in a capital D. Hmm, so it is case sensitive. You need to watch out for that. Don't try to interchange a lowercase d and a capital D. It needs to be lowercase d's, okay? So that's the first little caveat with this custom formatting. Next thing is, let's say I wanna display um, month, month, year, year. <clears throat> Here, you see my sample, that's what it's gonna look like. If I switch over to my report, you see that's what it looks like in my report. So as I change the custom format, it automatically changes that column for me, okay? And so, there's one more thing I wanna point, uh, point out about date, and this applies to all of the different data types that you can custom format. If you wanna display one of the key characters, like one that extracts out a value from that date, that month, or formats the number, or something like that, like M or N, if you wanna display that, you need to put a backslash in front of it. So let's say, for example, I want to display the month name, and I wanted to put the word month in parentheses, so if you look at the sample that it shows, it gets the month name correct, but it does not give me the, uh, the month name. It's actually replacing M with the actual month, and then IH, it's looking for some type of hour or something like that. And the only way to display those is to put a slash in front of it. So if I go back to my format and I put a slash there, you'll see M converts, and then if I go to N, N converts, and then if I go to H, H converts over to that literal value, okay? So if you're trying to display one of those key characters, make sure you put a forward slash in front of it or backwards slash. I don't know, I always get confused by these slashes. Make sure you put it there so it can convert over, right? And so formatting dates are pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Just go and check it out, you know, try different patterns and let me know, let me know what you think. Comments below. All right, so that's number one. And number two, we're gonna talk about time. Time has a really interesting uh, formatting thing and that's why I pulled that one out. So. If we go to format my time, we click it, and then you do the same thing, date time format, choose custom, there we go. And then in the drop down box, in the little box where the format is, right, we wanna change some things up, okay? And so what I want is, I want minute. I just want the double digit minute, 07 or whatever the minute is, 59 or whatever it is, but I do wanna include the zero in front. So if I type MM, let's see what we get. We get 03, well, that's not right. So let's go back over to the report and go to time and you'll see it's what? That's not right. Because we can't interchange M. Um, M is used in Power BI format and M is used for month. So we need to use N. The key character for minute in Power BI is N. Remember that, this is a little caveat. Remember, okay, remember. So if I switch back to my format here, my model view and I type in NN, you'll see right, zero seven, if I go here, now it's pulling out 
the proper minute. And if I want to display preceding zeros, I need to put two ends. If I don't care about the zeros, I just put one in. Same thing for second, same thing for hour, okay? So like I said, this is just some fundamentals. This is just some basics, okay? The next thing I want to talk about, the next scenario, number three, is numbers. Numbers is a little more interesting, and I was, I'm excited about doing this demo. So let's switch back over to the model view. You see I have two different values, one that I'm gonna show you, one that I'm gonna format. So click on format and selecting custom is a little different. You still go to the format drop-down box, but you'll see custom is at the bottom. With date and time, it was at the top, with numbers at the bottom. Not a big deal, not a big deal, but just wanna point that out. So let's say I wanna display money, right? If I type in currency, bam, it works. What if I put lowercase currency? Oh, not right there. Make that, that C lower case. Let's see if it still works. Doesn't work, All right? Doesn't work. So you need to make sure that it's capital. I'm just reiterating the fact that this is case sensitive, okay? All right, so that's easy, right? But let's do some other formatting. So there's this hashtag or pound, like I know it, I'm a little, I got a little age on me, or zero. You need to understand the difference between those two, okay? And so I have a, a number here. Let's go to the number report. So I have a number that is uh, zero and I have some that's zero at the end. You can see, right? You can see just like that. And what I want to do is, let me refresh this. Uh, when it is a zero, I want to display the zeros. Um, and if it's just a regular digit, I want it to display the digit. And so that's how, when you need to know the difference between, um, you need to know the difference between the hashtag and the zero. So if I just type in hashtag dot, uh, hashtag dot, hashtag, hashtag, right? I just type pound, pound, whatever. And I go over here, you can see what it's gonna look like. If I go back here, what happened to my zeros, right? You see the zeros at the end? They're completely gone. It doesn't even display a zero there. That's because the hashtag, if it's a zero, it doesn't show anything, right? If it's a digit, it shows a digit. But if it's zero, it doesn't show it. That's where if you use zero, if it's an actual zero, it displays it. If it's a digit, it displays that digit. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I go back here, and I turn these to zeros, right? And nothing happens to the sample, but if I go over to my report, now you can see I have zero and I have one, but why isn't the preceding zero there? It's because I use a hashtag. Hashtag, remember, replaces, it doesn't display the zero. It shows the digit or it doesn't show anything, all right? That's easy, that's cool enough, right? And you can also add commas and things like that. So if I go here and put a comma, and I already have my decimal place there, and if I display it, you can see, right, the larger numbers will have commas. Not, eh, not a big deal, right? Kind of looking like the same thing. If you want to do currency, you can type it just like I did, or you can just put the currency symbol there. So I'm in the US, I'll put the dollar sign, and I go here, and you can see the dollar signs. So how do I handle, this is easy, this is straightforward, not a big deal, but now how, I want to handle negative numbers or zero, right? I want to format it differently if it's a, a negative number, I want to put parentheses around it. If it's a zero, I just want to show a zero. How do I handle that, right? How do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple, okay? But you need to, under you need to understand the sections that go with formatting. There's three sections, and each section is delimited by a semicolon, okay? The first section is for the positive numbers. The second number is for the negative numbers. The sec I'm sorry, the second section is for the negative numbers, and the last section is for zeros, okay? So, I don't know, kind of confusing, but let me show you I'm talking about. So I come here and this first one, I want the first section that I have is for my positive numbers. If I put a semicolon and I put two parentheses here and then I just copy this format. I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it right between there, right? Right between those. And you go back and what you'll see, if I go back to my report, you'll see parentheses around the negative numbers. Nothing happens to zero because it's just accepting the formatting of the positive number. If you don't put, if the section doesn't exist, right, the second and the third section, the negative and the zero section, it just assumes the formatting of the positive section, okay? Um, and then everything else is the same way, right? If I go back here and I say, you know what? If it is a zero, just show zero with no decimals, no dollar sign, anything, right? And you'll see how my zero just changes to zero. So you can control, right? This gives you the flexibility and the functionality to control different sections of it. And so I know what you guys are thinking. Well, can I display words or symbols or something for negative or positive? Maybe you're not thinking it. Maybe it's just me, Patrick, being weird. But yes, you absolutely can. So instead of having this, what I can do is say, 
For my positive numbers, display a plus. For my negative numbers, display a minus, and for zero, still display zero. If I go back, you'll see, I, oh, hang on a second, I messed up something just a little bit. It's okay, that's why we're here, we make mistakes. Oh, right there. So I forgot my semicolon. So you have to use those semicolons to separate, right? To delimit your sections. If you don't, you'll get those type of results. You get little mistakes, right? It's okay to make mistakes. That's how we learn. So if I go here, now you can see negative plus and zero. You can also, right, for these sections, if you want to put words, I can say positive, negative, if you want to do something like this, right? And zero if you wanna do this, right? So we click here, and then what you'll see, negative, positive, zero. Just like that, right? So like I said in this video, I just wanted to lay the foundation to help you guys get quickly started with custom formatting. If you have any questions, comments, you know what to do. Post them in the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.